The UK parliamentary system can seem a little confusing from the outside. It's hard to know what's going on inside Parliament and what it means for your life. That's why we run a series called This Week in Parliament to show you exactly what bills are being discussed on the floor. We have loads of people ask us to go into more detail about how bills actually go through the House and explain how laws are passed in the UK. Before we go into the specifics of the bill, it's important to first understand just how the British Parliament works. Parliament is split into two houses, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. The House of Commons seats 650 members of Parliament, or MPs, people elected to represent areas of the UK known as constituencies. The House of Lords sits around 800 unelected members known as Lords. They are appointed by the Queen, usually at the advice of the Prime Minister, or the House of Lords Appointment Committee, established in 2000. The role of the Lords today is to hold the government to account, and make sure that the laws being passed are effective and fit for purpose. They cannot veto legislation though, they can only delay it for one year. Historically this wasn't always the case. In the past, if the House of Lords didn't like a piece of legislation that the House of Commons suggested, they could stop it completely. This changed due to the passing of the Parliament Acts in 1911 and 1949. These acts removed the veto power from the House of Lords, and instead allowed them to delay legislation for two years and then for one year respectively. These steps majorly reduced the power of the House of Lords. In addition to this, the Salisbury Convention, which started in the 1940s, was and still is an agreement between the House of Lords and the House of Commons, which says that if a piece of legislation is in the government's manifesto, the House of Lords will not block it at the second or third reading. This again reduces the power of the House of Lords. So in the modern day, the House of Lords has a lot less power than it once did, and serves only really as a check to make sure that the pieces of legislation are fit for purpose. This isn't to say that their job isn't useful, just that they can't cause as big a problem for the government as they once could. Now we've explained a brief history of the relationship between the House of Commons and the House of Lords, it's time for the exciting bit. How the laws are passed. For the purposes of this video we're going to look at bills starting in the House of Commons, introduced by the government, known as public bills. There are also what are known as private members bills, which are introduced by MPs or Lords who are not government ministers, as well as private and hybrid bills. There's so much to discuss that we'll have to do that in another video. If you'd like us to cover these types of bills in a video, like this video and comment below to let us know. The first step towards legislation is often a green paper, which is usually vague and contains multiple policy options. These are consultation documents, introduced mainly to stimulate parliamentary discussion on the topic of legislation. Once it's been briefly discussed in Parliament, the government will usually begin consulting citizens and the public bodies which are most likely to be affected by the legislation. Once this process is finished, the government will then issue what's known as a white paper. This will be informed by the public consultation and contain more concrete policy proposals. They often include a draft bill, to provide a basis for changes to be made before the bill is formally presented to Parliament. Finally, a bill is formally proposed and read. This is the first reading. There's no debate at this stage. The bill will usually just be read to the House of Commons. The next stage is the second reading. This is when the House of Commons has its first debate on the proposed bill. After the debate, MPs have a vote on whether the bill should continue. If it succeeds, then the bill goes on to the third stage, known as the committee stage. This is when one of the committees in Parliament takes a closer look at the proposed bill. The chairman of the committee can then decide which amendments to the bill are discussed and then voted on by the committee. After this is a chance for the whole House of Commons to suggest amendments. This is known as the report stage. Once the whole of the House has had the opportunity to suggest amendments, the bill goes on to its third reading. Usually there's little debate. At the end of this stage the bill is voted on. If it succeeds then it goes on to the House of Lords. At this point, the process is repeated in generally the same format in the House of Lords. Like in the House of Commons, the bill goes through a first reading, second reading, committee stage, report stage and third reading in the House of Lords. If the House of Lords decides on any changes to the bill, then it's then sent back to the House of Commons to be debated and agreed to there. If during this stage the House of Commons makes any amendments, it's then sent back to the House of Lords to agree to. This continues until no more changes are made. This back and forth procedure is known as ping pong. Once the ping ponging has stopped and both houses have agreed on the wording of the bill, it's sent to the Queen for royal assent. This is when the Queen signs off the bill and allows it to become law. It's a convention that the Queen always grants royal assent. 
The Parliament Acts, mentioned earlier, can be used if during parliamentary ping-pong, neither house can agree on the wording of the bill. The House of Commons, in these exceptional circumstances, pulls rank. So it's clear that both the House of Commons and House of Lords play a vital role in the lengthy process of creating laws in the UK. If you want to stay up to date with where bills are in this process and what MPs are debating in the House, you would enjoy our series This Week in Parliament. We're bringing the series back next weekend and we'll be running it bigger and better than ever all the way through until Christmas. If you want to find out more about the series and what changes are going to be made this season, then you can read the article that I've just posted on our Patreon page. You don't need to be a Patreon backer to read the article, but if you had been a backer, you'd have been able to read it a couple of days in advance. So if you want all of the exclusive news, as well as early video access, producer credits and other perks, sign up to be our Patreon and chuck a few bucks a month our way. If you don't want to do that, then make sure to subscribe to our channel and the This Week in Parliament newsletter for all of the latest updates when this series returns.